Welcome to the horror hour. I'm just going to sit down and play. We all go a little mad. Oh, I get you. Oh, oh, it's it's right. Right. The dead yeah, you are going to die with me. Where's Johnny? Look at me, Johnny. It's all for you. I understand. If you make me All right. Well, hello and welcome to the Horror Hour, a place where we discuss, debate, and disagree on all things horror. I'm one of the co-hosts here, Yutaka, and today I'm really excited to invite um, Sandrine Holt onto our show to talk about their new project, The Aviary, which comes out this Friday in select theaters and uh, video or video on demand and PVOD. So, and I really enjoyed it because it creeped me out because I love a good cult story. Um, so what I'd like to ask first off about uh, your character, Delilah, um, one of the things that I really enjoyed is the fact that, you know, uh, she's given everything that she could to this for what she believed was good. And in it, she's just willing, you know, she's got her beliefs that are more important than, you know, this entire um, concept that Seth has built and is willing to walk away. And I'm curious, personally and professionally, has there ever been a time that, you know, you just, you look at your beliefs, and you're like, you know what, I, I can't uh, continue with this and you go a separate way. Oh, like in a situation where you, you, what is it? The, uh, yeah, I think that, um, I think that's how most things begin. I think people have really good intentions and they have an ideal they want to follow and, um, but things are just not black and white, unfortunately, if they were only so simple. And I think that's where uh, you see in situations where uh, some, something is unjust and then it'll swing in the complete opposite uh, extreme of the pendulum. And I think that's what happens in this. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I really did like your character. Uh, I felt that she was very pivotal to the story in the eventual underlying mystery, because um, as I had met with the filmmakers earlier, uh, one of the things that I can't stand in film because it, it just raises my blood pressure, um, confined spaces. However, this was a film that kind of did the opposite, but also, you know, we've just been in a huge, we're still going through a pandemic, um, and to be in this wide open space, but then just so isolated, that raised my blood pressure through the roof. I'm like, I don't know which is worse. And so I'm just curious, um, thinking about just in terms of horror or thriller, you know, when mm -hmm. it comes to situations, what scares you the most? Um, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, I have a fear of driving, uh, not driving, getting from point A to B, but I, I have a fear of driving on the freeway. I have a fear of like driving over bridges. If somebody else is driving, it's fine, um, which is weird. Uh, and driving in, on, on those freeways with the big open spaces. And I literally feel like I'm gonna fall off the face of the earth. Oh, wow. So I, I, I don't know if that's what you have, if you have a more claustrophobic thing or just the, the wide uh, open space. I'm not claustrophobic in life, but I think when it comes to filmmaking, uh, there's just, I, I get so, I like surrender to the film and so I've mm -hmm. got tunnel vision. And so when it starts to close in and that's all I can see, it uh, it just, my heart is pounding in. Um, but I didn't expect that from now, this wide open space. I'm like, oh, I, I'd love to be outside, but they're like, you're all alone. And mm -hmm. so it's very interesting. The isolation, like the pandemic. Um. Yeah, I think that, uh, I think a lot of people during their isolation sort of came to a lot of like realizations, but then also, you know, for those who were extroverts or who are extroverts, I think it was really difficult to, to manage that kind of isolation. Um, and, and real, something that I also, uh, Actually, I just really enjoy uh, the fact that I, um, I've i seen your work, some of your work before, especially I'm a law and order junkie. Um, yeah. I, I, but also, you know, Resident Evil and then Underworld. And, yeah. um, but what I love, I did come across a quote that you had stated that, uh, you know, normally most leads, they're just, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but they're, they're just looking for somebody that's Caucasian. And that mm -hmm. kind of hit me. 
because I think about all the times that I've grown up um, mm -hmm. and I never got to see myself represented in film. And so I'd like to know what it's like though, to be out there consistent. I mean, you, you've been consistently acting and just um, in a mixture of roles and what that means to you. Yeah. Um, well, it's been, it's, it's been about 30 years. So I think things were a lot different 30 years ago. Um, they were much fewer roles um, for Asian actors. Um, I actually think there's also still a shortage of Asian actors, yes. um, just overall. Uh, it's not really in the Asian culture to um, want your children to become actors. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. Oh, it, you know, this is not very responsible or uh, secure. Um, but I think things have been opening up. Um, I think in my case and, and yours, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're not one thing or we're not the other thing. We're like two things together. So um, you're either too Asian to be white or you're too white to be yeah. Asian. Yeah. I get that so completely. That can be very difficult. Um, and also to, there's a different sort of political correctness that exists now that didn't really exist before. And I'm talking about that pendulum thing again, mm -hmm. going from one extreme to another extreme. Um, I think uh, a lot of actors, you know, because there were so few uh, parts um, available, uh, actors would have to be another culture. Mm -hmm. you know? So I started my career playing a lot of indigenous cultures um, because that's, that's what I, I, I was perceived that I looked like at that time, you know, which would never, would never happen now. No. So it's, 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 it's an ever evolving situation. And I think actors are just trying to, you know, try to make the best of it and try to roll with it and just try to offer something that's uniquely you, you know, and just try, try to put that noise behind you kind of thing. I mean, I, I just, it caught me off guard and I, I loved it because, you know, I love horror and it's one of my favorite genres, but I can tell you just, um, you know, I think pro like in my 38 years, there has finally been a pro um, a project that recently came out that the filmmakers were Asian American and they wanted Asian American leads. And I was just like, I was floored. I was like, that's amazing. I've never seen that. And so um, it's very interesting because I also live in the Midwest. So I, I love seeing when, um, you know, just other, just in general, Asians uplifting each other, especially in this time that we've just kind of gone through. And I do think at the box office or in movies, we're finally, I feel like we're getting more of a resurgence uh, in terms of people realize that we're, we can tell authentic stories, but we don't also have to be the stereotype. Yes, Which, that's, yeah, I agree. it's taken so, I mean, we, I still see it occasionally, but it's very nice to see that, that we're moving further away from I that. Agree. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. So. And it's no longer just, oh, you're Asian, you know, we're casting for that. It's more, you're perfect for the role or we, you know, so. Yeah. It's almost like um, when they always ask, like, what does it feel like to be a, a female director or, you know, <laughs> whatever, a female, whatever it is. Um, and then I think once we start, stop asking those questions, then we've already gotten past that. But I um, hope so. Cause I mean, there, I, I forgot who had said it, but there's just a vast amount of talent out there. And when you just focus on this one section, you are just cutting yourself off from so many wonderful, um, stories or it's just, it, you know, yeah. Again, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because I, I think it's very important. Also, it just means a lot to me. Um, yeah. And I really enjoyed this movie because um, one thing, as I'll, I'll circle back to that, um, cults just get under my skin. There's just something about when I watch those types of um, stories. And I think that this uh, did a great way of just building on top of a mystery and I would like to know just um, when you were looking at this role and um, how you wanted to approach it, 
I just, uh, I think about your interactions with Seth and um, I was not expecting that because I guess the way that your characters talked about in the beginning until then you finally see her, I'm like, oh. So I'd like to know where that inner strength came from because I, I found her to be very like strong-willed and I, it was really good. Um, well, first of all, it was really awesome working with Chris. Um, he's a great actor to work with and uh, the directors were very, very cool. And um, I think people, we were just playing around and trying to find like little pieces and sort of improvising off the dialogue. And that's sort of how it came up about. But um, talking about cults, like I have probably watched every cult <laughs> documentary. I'm kind of fascinated by the whole thing. Like, it's just so fascinating. Um, I, yeah, I've, um, there are, I think like two or three different Nixium uh, documentaries and I've, I've watched them. I think one's coming back and I, I do, I think it's, um, I think when it comes to uh, mental health, but also just, um, because in a way you, you like, we're constantly being bombarded by like ads and being sold yes. and being these ideas. So like on some level we're, we're <laughs> being brainwashed on a regular <laughs> basis, right? <laughs> it's like they live all over again. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I found it to be very unique uh, because also I like that there are, there are so many different cult stories that are being told, but I, I like that your this story was very separated from what I, I've seen in most, mm -hmm. um, but it, there with so few cast members, it relied on that script, which I thought you all did great with. And um, another thing, just how was it then to be, I mean, you guys were filming out... Uh, in the LA desert or? It's funny that you asked that because before speaking to you, I was trying to remember where the hell we were. <laughs> of course I didn't drive myself there because yeah. I've, I've taken a, a freeway. So I have, I literally have no idea where we were. Oh wow. Um, it took approximately maybe one or two hours to get there. And uh, wherever they have those giant ants with those giant ant hills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was very desolate. Um, yeah, it was the perfect setting. It, it was, yeah, it it gave me chills again. Like I said, I didn't think I, that wide open space, but I was just like, man, I, hmm, mm -mm. Um, I guess then uh, one, one other thing that I would like to know, just because as we do love horror and everything, mm -hmm. I would like to know if there um, has been anything this past, in the past year, um, in the horror genre that has, you know, really just been a pleasant surprise or a, a, a shock? Um, I get scared really easily. So <laughs> I don't watch a lot of scary films, but my daughter loves scary films. Um, and I didn't let her see this one in particular, but I thought The Lighthouse, is it called The Lighthouse? Um, that completely tripped me out with Willem Dafoe. It was like, oh, that was... Yeah, and I think that sort of, cause there's, I mean, I don't, I can't really define, but there's horror and then there's psychological thriller aspect. Mm -hmm. I think that getting into your head and those weird inconsistencies or did you see that? No, wait, did I see that? No, I didn't. Um, that, that does me in, but that, that was probably the scariest, one of the scariest ones. It was a good, it was, it was a huge mind trip. Yeah. Um, well, what I'd also like to know then, because um, I always do find it fascinating to where obviously uh, with acting and especially like, as you said, you know, there are a lot of people that act in horror films or in that genre, but they're not a fan. So how do you overcome that? Because sometimes I'm curious if it's just also, as you mm -hmm. said, like you yeah. read the script or you're on set and it just gives you chills, but how do you um, overcome that to play the role? Um, well, I think in this case, because it was based on a cult, um, I had a particular interest to that specifically. I don't, I think if it was, I, I don't know if I would have been as interested if it was like a straight up horror with like gore and, you know, uh, I thought it was intelligently written. Um, Agreed. Yeah, I, was, it, I, I enjoyed reading it. So it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I'll wrap up with one more if that's okay. Um, yeah. I would like to know then just uh, 
in the past, or you know, this year I think has been a great year for cinema already. And I would like to also know what's just been a film you recently saw that you enjoyed. Um, oh God, uh, let's see. There's been there's been a few. Um, I'm kind of this is a television thing, but I've okay. been sort of addicted to my brilliant friend. That's kind of I've been really into seeing films from other countries as well because we haven't been able to travel so much and I just love being transported to another time and place it's like if I'm going to take the time to watch something uh, I I kind of actually feel that I I was supposed to actually go to uh this past year um over to Japan and so I've just been watching a lot of either tv shows or uh films as well just because mm-hmm. it's something I wanted to do but I I can't but that'll eventually change but I just want to say thank you for um, allowing me the time to interview you, um, talk about, well, just culture, uh, film, and of course, The Aviary, which again, I thoroughly enjoyed. I, I love I love a good film that just creeps me out. Um, and it was just an absolute honor to get to speak with you. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. You have been listening to the horror hour. See you next time.